Hi, and welcome back to the sixth section of the Framer Playground course. We've learned how to create these code components, how to apply property controls. Now it's time to use them in the context of a prototype. So we have this input here and we want to have some interactions with it. For example, when we focus on the input, we want the background color to change. And we can do that in code. So we're going to go to the code and go to input. In order to apply that animation, I'm going to import use animation. So use animation right here. Then I'm going to set the control so that I can apply the animation and control it. So let's do const controls is equal to use animation parentheses. Then I'm going to set the animation for in and out. And I'm going to put them inside a function so that I can call it directly from the component that I want to animate. So function animate in parentheses curly braces reference the controls dot start parentheses curly braces and we're going to change the background color column and we're going to use some CSS color with opacity so RGBA parentheses and then this is the RGB values so 255 comma 255 255 and then set the opacity these three values simply means RGBA and this is equivalent to white and so I'm gonna set 0.1 in terms of opacities which means 10% let's apply this animation to the parent frame so we're gonna set animate is equal to curly braces controls and then now we're going to apply the animation on the event so the event that we want is on focus is equal to curly braces and then call the function which is animate in so now we can test it and you can see when I focus the size is not properly set up so we're gonna fix that luckily for us we already set up the default props with the width and the height so we can actually use that to set the size of our parent frame so we're gonna do width is equal to props dot width and then I'm going to save in order to get some formatting height is equal to props dot height so if you refresh this and you test it again we only need to fix the border radius that's easy to fix so border radius we're gonna set it to 20 great now we just need to make sure that when we tap out of this we need to make sure that the background goes back to the way it was so we're gonna set up a new animation so right after animate in function animate out parentheses curly braces and at this point you're kind of family with code a little bit so you can definitely copy and paste this one to here I don't want to rewrite this line of code so that can be useful as long as you understand what's going on in this case I just want to be able to do exactly the same thing except that I want it to go back to zero in terms of opacity so let's apply that animation right after on focus we're gonna set on blur is equal to animate out so now if you test this when it's focus and then when you tap outside that's really nice perfect so now we're gonna go back to the login screen let's just resize this properly and then we're going to import the keyboard so we already imported the component we just need to place it somewhere I'm going to put it at the very bottom and I'm going to include that inside a frame so that I can position it so frame and then end frame inside that I'm gonna put keyboard so now you can see that the keyboard is at the top so I'm gonna reposition it by doing bottom is equal to minus 200 so basically I want to hide the keyboard 
And now what I want to do is to be able to show it back up when a user press on one of these inputs. I'm going to use exactly the same technique as earlier. So next to frame, I'm going to import also the use animation and set the controls first. Const controls is equal to use animation, parentheses, set the function for animate in, parentheses, curly braces, and then set my controls, start, parentheses, curly braces. We're gonna change the Y position, column, minus 291. Now let's apply this animation to our keyboard parent frame. So animate is equal to controls. And then let's find an event. In this case, we want it so that when a user tap on the parent frame, that will initiate this animation. So let's do that on tap. On tap is equal to, and then animate in. Let's test it. So when I tap, wow, we have this keyboard that comes up. Let's do the dismiss animation. Very similar technique. Right after the function animate in, I'm gonna set function animate out, parentheses, curly braces. And yes, you can also copy and paste this. And the positioning, it's going to be back to zero. Perfect. Now we need to be able to dismiss the keyboard when we unfocus this. So we're gonna do exactly the same. So unblur is equal to, and I'm gonna save this so I have more space. Animate out like this. Let's test it. I'm gonna tap here, it shows up tap out and then it dismisses. Just like on the iPhone, we also wanna be able to move the entire frame when the keyboard comes up. In order to achieve that, we're gonna to have to group a bunch of elements together. So for example, what controls the background is the login component. And we also wanna to put together with the login component, the input. So we're gonna to have to put all of this stuff inside a parent frame. So let's do that. Frame. And then here, right after input, I'm going to close that parent frame. And I'm gonna save, it's gonna give me the proper indentation. So now this whole element, this whole frame is going to control everything excluding the keyboard, right? And then the keyboard is gonna come up, it's its own layer that's going to sit on top of the screen and the background and the input. So, I'm going to apply the animation on that new frame. So animate is equal to controls. Now you can see that when I tap here, both the screen and the keyboard is animating at the same time. The animation is a little bit bouncy right now, especially in this context. So we're gonna use transition properties on each of those frames separately. So here I'm gonna add a new one called transition is equal to curly braces, put another set of curly braces because we have multiple values. In this case, we're gonna change the ease property and we're gonna have ease out. On top of that, we're gonna have a duration of 0.4. You can save to have some formatting. And I'm going to do the same for the keyboard. So transition is equal to curly braces curly braces again, ease, set to ease out. Let me save this to have more control. And after ease out, comma, we're gonna set duration to 0.3. Both of them are going to animate at the same time, except that the duration is different. So you're gonna see a slight difference in the timing and it's gonna have a nice effect. So you'll see. So I click here, you can see that the keyboard comes first and then at the very last 0.1 second, there's a bit of a parallax at the very end. It's kind of nice. That's amazing. Let's finish our prototype. Now that we have these input components and icon components that are customizable using props, I'm going to change the placeholder for this one to password and the icon to the password icon. 
So voila, we have a customizable input and we're gonna add another one. So I'm gonna copy and paste this frame, including the input, paste it like that. And for the first one, I'm gonna set to email instead. So email and the icon is going to be email. And I'm going to change the positioning to 387. And if you refresh, that's it. Now we have both input fields. You can even customize the colors of the icon by using the shared color. So we're gonna go to the canvas line right next to login and keyboard. We're going to add colors. And then using the colors, now we can apply that to our input. So color is equal to colors.primary. I'm going to do the same for this one. Color, colors.primary. Before we conclude, I wanna set the default props for the login screen so that when we import that to the layers, it's going to have proper width and height. So login screen dot default props is equal to curly braces and the width is going to be 375 the height is going to be 812 now i'm going to go to the components and then import this code component right here so you can see this is my code component and this is my design component i'm going to close this and I wanna show you that if you do change, let's say, the shared colors, it's going to affect the code component live. As you can see here, it's really neat. And that is the power of code components and also shared colors working together seamlessly to create an experience such as this one. Awesome, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson where you learn how to build an entire login experience with your own code components, with your list of icons, with shared colors, and how to create a prototype directly from the code so you can have more power over how to animate each of those components. In the next session, I'm going to teach you how to use gestures and some advanced animation controls so that you can create a really cool animated transition and play video experience. I'll see you then.